हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू माई YouTube चैनल फिजिक्स क्लब बाई शक्ति सर सो इन टूडेज लेक्चर आई एम गोइंग टू डिमॉन्स्ट्रेट यू अ लिटल इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द फ्रेम ऑफ रेफरेंसेज फॉर द एलेवेंथ ग्रेड फिजिक्स और हाई स्कूल फिजिक्स सो इट्स अ वेरी कॉम्प्लिकेटेड टॉपिक बट आई विल ट्राई टू मेक इट एज क्लियर एज पॉसिबल सो दैट इट विल रिमेन इन योर ब्रेन थ्रू आउट योर जनर जर्नी इन फिजिक्स सो लेट स्टार्ट विद द टॉपिक so we know that whenever we want to specify the position of an object let's say we have an object here and we want to specify its position right now what you will say about this uh, particle how far it is so describe the position of this particle we need to specify one uh, another observer for example we need to specify its position from your house from nearest tree from the road or something else it means that its position is relative because let's say we have an a tree here and a person here so the position of this object is relative to the person and from the person it is say x one distance away and from the tree it is x two distance away so what i am trying to say here the frame of reference here the person or the tree is behaving as an observer who is observing the particle so from the point of view of the person the particle is x1 distance away and from the point view of tree the particle is x2 distance away so this person or the tree is behaving as a frame of a reference so to specify the position of a particle we need a frame of reference this is very discrete statement so to specify the position of a particle we need a frame of reference frame of and the good thing is we can choose the frame of reference according to our convenience choice depends on our convenience as in this situation and the more mathematical form of the choice is the three dimensional cartesian coordinates these are the three dimensional cartesian coordinates let's consider these x axis y axis and z axis so this is more preferable in the language of physics so this x y z cartesian coordinate axis can be considered as a frame of reference and with and this is their origin and from the origin we can specify the position of any object let's say this particle we can specify the position from with respect to this frame so in general most of the cases our frame of reference is this three dimensional mutually perpendicular axis which are the cartesian coordinate axis okay so whatever the position of the particle we will consider that position of the particle from the origin of this cartesian coordinate axis right so here this is the frame of reference so this cartesian coordinate act as the frame of reference right and in the above examples here the person is behaving as the frame of reference it means that it means that the frame is attached with the person it means that something like this the frame is attached with the person something like this x y and z and th that's why the person is specifying that the stone is 5 meter away right whenever we say that our friend home is 500 meter away it means that we are considering our position as the initial position or the origin of the frame of reference 
and from our frame of reference we are saying that my friend home is 500 meter away i hope it is clear that what is the frame of reference and why it is important to specify the position now there are few more things we need to know about the frame of reference and it's that one thing is there is no rule to choose the frame of reference so keep in mind there is no rule to choose the frame of reference so we can choose the frame of reference according to our convenience whatever if we are at rest we are considering ourselves as the frame of reference if we are in motion we are considering ourselves as the frame of reference so whatever whatever is the choice is totally depend on our convenience so there is no particular rule so uh, what should be the frame of reference in a particular situation so where you feel comfortable you can choose that uh, position as the frame of reference okay so there are two types of frame of references now let's discuss those okay so I can say there is a frame of a reference okay and I can subdivide them one is at rest if the frame of reference is at rest if the frame of reference is moving with uniform velocity uniform velocity frame is moving with uniform velocity or we can say it's uniform motion when the velocity is constant we say uniform motion okay and the third one is when velocity is changing or variable velocity variable velocity it's also called accelerating so accelerating situation so here I need to uh, give you a brief uh, theory regarding this rest and uniform velocity as we know very well that the Newton laws keep in mind it's very important Newton laws are hold very well in the first two situations it means that these two situations these two are under inertial frame of reference inertial frame of reference frame of reference initial frame of reference and under these initial frame of references Newton laws hold well Newton's laws hold well or we can say that Newton laws are valid only in these situation when our frame of reference is at rest or moving with constant motion or we can say uniform velocity then only we can apply the Newton laws of motion right but in the other situation in the other situation where is the velocity is variable Newton laws are not valid and this reference frame this this reference frame called non inertial non inertial frame of reference and here Newton laws are not valid Newton laws are not valid we cannot apply the direct equations of Newton laws uh, in the case of variable or accelerating frame of references or we can say the non inertial frame of references we can solve the numerical problems uh, in non inertial frame of reference in Newtonian me Newton mechanics but we need to do some extra effort we need to handle the uh, pseudo force in this situation we will talk about later what the pseudo force is and how to solve the numerical with the help of pseudo force when the frame of reference is non inertial but here the more fundamental things we are discussing now are the Newton uh, laws are valid only if the frame of reference is at rest let's cons consider the situation here again let's consider this is a tree so tree and there is a big rock so this is tree 
so tree is at a rest and this this is uh, a pro consider that the rock is also at rest so we are attaching the coordinate system to this tree x y z so here the tree act as a frame of reference act as frame of reference so you know that the newton laws or the law of inertia what states if a body at rest will remain at rest so in this case the rock is at rest will remain at rest from the point of view of a tree so according to the tree the rock is at rest and if there we attach a clock so whatever the time on the clock it it will remain same right so uh, with that uh, time the position of the rock remains same that is if the rock is at rest at a particular time after some time after some time the clock moves the time goes on but the position remain same so the body at rest will remain at rest that is the law of inertia and this law holds well when the frame of reference is at rest okay now the second situation is if the body is moving with uniform velocity so if the body is moving with uniform velocity let's say we have a cart we have a truck which is moving with uniform velocity let's say it is moving with 10 meter per second with positive x axis on the ground okay and there is there is a block on the truck so it is also moving with the same velocity of 10 meter per second and the distance between this let's say 2 meter so this distance remains same as the clock show time the time goes on but the position of the block will remain 2 meter whatever the time is it means that again the statement says if a body is moving with uniform velocity will remain in uniform velocity this is also the law of inertia you know we know that the if a body at rest will remain at rest or if a body in uniform motion will remain in uniform motion unless or until an external non zero force act on the system so there is no force acting on the system so, uh, there is uh, there is no non zero forces acting on the system or acting on the block so its position remain same that is 2 meter from the head of the truck okay so these two examples specify that here the tree act as a inertial frame of reference here the truck act as a inertial frame of reference where the tree is at rest but the truck is in uniform velocity that's why i am saying that if the situation is at rest or in uniform motion then the frame of reference then the coordinate systems attached with the particular object like tree or truck uh, act as inertial frame of references here the law of uh, newton laws hold well newton laws of mechanics holds well but what about if the ob if the frame of reference is accelerating let's see with this example again we are considering a truck and this is the situation of the truck okay here we have an block here but the truck in this case is accelerating it means that its initial velocity is let's say 10 meter per second and and the time clock is something like this but after after some time due to application of brakes the position of the block shifted somewhere here so earlier position is here so the position of the block shifted when the velocity decreases to let's say 2 meter per second 
so you get the situation now the time also changed let's say the time is something like this okay so here initial velocity is 10 meter per second and after some time the velocity is 2 meter per second it means that the velocity is changing or we can say the truck is in accelerating motion the truck it has some acceleration right so due to this acceleration due to this acceleration what we see the block moves forward as this block move forward but there is no net non zero external force keep in mind no net non zero external force acting on the block as there is no net external force acting on the block even then the block is moving forward how you are getting my point because newton newton law says if force is zero then acceleration is zero it means that if the body is at rest will remain at rest or in motion will remain in motion but here the block is at rest but after some time the block move forward it means here it is at rest then it move how it move how this possible without without any non zero external force on the block so this situation only arises when the frame of reference is accelerating there is no force actually there is no actual force so we say in physics we says that there is fictitious force there is fictitious force or pseudo force acts on the block due to which the block moves forward so we will come to know in the next few lectures how to handle this pseudo force or how to apply the newton second law in such situations when the a uh, platform or the frame of reference is non inertial so here you know here the newton first law is not valid right the body is at rest will remain at rest is the statement of newton first law but here that statement is not valid the body is at rest comes to motion without any force right here force equals to zero net force equals to zero in this case but body comes to motion that's why i'm saying here the newton laws are not valid so don't try to apply the statement of newton laws in this situation or confuse yourself that how you can solve this numerical problems because usually we are habitual to apply the newton laws everywhere without considering the frame of reference so whenever you are trying to solve the newton laws firstly look at the frame of reference if it is a non inertial in nature so don't try the newton laws directly to solve the numerical problem otherwise you will frame a misconception in your mind okay so i hope you come to know how what is non inertial and what is inertial frame of reference and how with few examples there is one more thing i need to put some efforts about the earth so earth is a inertial frame of reference or non inertial frame of reference we will discuss this so actually earth is non inertial frame of reference why it's non inertial frame of reference because it is rotating it is moving that's why and it has some acceleration so anything on the any object any tree any mountain on the earth is in rotation has some acceleration even we are in our room we are rotating with earth we have some acceleration associated with with us even then we are saying we are at rest we are considering ourselves at rest on our bed why because we are neglecting the motion of the earth but in but actually the earth is rotating earth is is not at rest so actually the earth is a non inertial frame we are considering earth is at rest 
under the assumption because we don't feel the acceleration of the earth because it is very 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 small value so in ideal situation ideal situation or we can say its assumption its assumption that earth is inertial frame of reference inertial frame of reference so we assume it that earth is a inertial frame of reference and after this assumption after this assumption we can apply newton's law so if it is not specify about the earth we will consider by default that we are considering the earth as a inertial frame of reference but keep in mind there is nothing there is no frame of reference ideally as inertial frame so there is no ideal inertial frame of reference inertial frame of reference keep in mind there is no inertial frame of reference in this universe inertial frame of reference comes into picture after the approximation after the assumptions we consider okay all the frame of references in real life are non inertial frame of references because everything in the universe is in motion with respect to each other is accelerating with respect to each other right so this is very important discussion that earth is actually the non inertial frame of reference but after taking the assumption we can consider it as inertial frame of reference so there are few more uh, statements we need to discuss about the frame of references and that is if we consider here we have a frame of reference s which have x axis y axis z axis and there is one more frame of reference we can say it is s dash having x dash y dash and z dash so it is given that this is inertial this is inertial frame of reference and this is not we don't know about s dash but it is moving with constant velocity with respect to s so the discussion is or we can write the statement is that any frame which is moving uniformly with respect to inertial frame is also inertial frame so any frame which is moving uniformly uniformly means constant velocity with respect to inertial frame with respect to inertial frame is also an inertial frame what it means that it means that the velocity of s dash with respect to s is uniform okay if this is uniform if this is constant then only we can say s dash is also is also inertial frame inertial frame of a reference so this is very important very very important statement you need to know about it the last point i need to discuss here is that let's say here we have an object we have an particle here p okay and it has some acceleration with respect to s or with respect to s dash so as we have con concluded that s and s dash both are inertial frame of references then s and s dash both are inertial frame 
then the acceleration of the particle with respect to s dash is equal to the acceleration of the particle with respect to s it means that what it means it means that if let's say it is at rest and it is moving with constant velocity if we have a person here a if we have an observer here b so a is observing the acceleration of particle p which we can write acceleration of particle p with respect to s b is also observing the acceleration of particle p from the moving uh, from the moving frame of reference so here we write acceleration of p with respect to s dash so the measurement done by a as well as b are equal in terms of acceleration why this comes equal because both the frame of references are inertial frame of references although the s is at rest and s dash is moving with constant velocity they are fulfilling the definition of inertial frame of references so from the inertial frame of references any number of frame of inertial frame of references the acceleration measured by the observer a and b are equal or we can say the acceleration of p with respect to s is equal to the acceleration of p with respect to s dash and this happens only when the observers are in inertial frame of references so this is very important discussion about the frame of references what is non inertial frame of reference what is inertial frame of reference under the inertial frame of reference we have rest and uniform motion and under the non inertial frame of reference we have the system is moving with some variable velocity so i hope you come to know you know that uh, the newton laws where we can apply directly or where we cannot apply the newton laws so newton laws are applicable only in inertial frame of references and we cannot apply the newton laws in non inertial frame of references one more thing we need to know or we need to revise is earth is actually the non inertial frame of reference but under some approximations we can consider earth as inertial frame of references this is all from for the today's lecture we will meet soon in our next lecture till then bye bye wish you all the best